Hello and welcome to another episode of Monthly Sketch Tours. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit special. We're going to be revisiting one of my old sketchbooks. So I'm sure you're familiar with this one. But this is something I found when I was back in my parents' home. And it's a sketchbook from 10 years ago. I did this when I was um, just starting out taking art seriously. So look at that in a little bit because I started redrawing some of the old art in the sketchbook here. Okay, so let's just kick off right where we last started, which was this page. Um, I finished the sketchbook this time, and this was the only sketchbook, aside from the World War I sketchbook, that I worked on, and I made the effort of finishing it for April. I'm going to be doing a full flip through of the sketchbook in a separate video if you want to see uh, this whole sketchbook in its entirety. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay, so I just wanted to do it something a little bit messier, I guess, from the previous drawings, because the previous drawings were actually pretty tight and quite finished. So, um, except for this one, I guess. So I wanted to go back to my comfort zone, I guess you could call it, and just started drawing mechs and spaceships to you know bring myself back into that designery mode just because I've been doing a lot of like illustrations but not too much design work because they're just like regular kind of plain. So I wanted to do something a bit more designery and then finished it up and then sort of <laughs> ruined it with the blue pen a little bit. More spaceships and a walker here. Um, all done in just black ballpoint pen. I don't know what happened here. So this is what I call a lost page. You know when you ruin a page so bad with a drawing that you just sort of want to give up on the page and then move on and hope it gets better? This is one of those. Uh, so I did some gouache here and then I wanted to do some spatian, uh, spatian, base station-y stuff for a digital piece I was working on. So I just drew this asset just to explore and study some of the shapes that uh, you see on stuff like the ISS, for example. And then just a gouache practice, um, learning how to do architecture. So I really like this combination of blue ballpoint pen and gold ink. I think blue and gold is such a nice combination and I really wish I did more of these. A more gouache practice. I'm not a fan of this one to be honest. I don't really like it. And that's why I sort of left this part blank just because I don't want to look at it any more than I have to. Oh, I found this gacha toy recently while I was cleaning my room and I thought it was really cute. And the piece of paper that came with the toy had all these like super funny animals here. So I thought it might be a bit of a waste to throw it away. So I stuck it in here and I drew an octopus to go along with it. I'm just gonna leave this guy here for now. So this is where my old sketchbook comes in now because I found this while I was cleaning my bookshelf and I thought it would be a really cool idea to just look back on what I used to draw 10 years ago and then sort of redraw them in my sketchbook. I sort of used it as a tiny little project just to give me some ideas on what to draw for the rest of the sketchbook and how to fill it up. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's not so different than what I draw today just a bit worse. Anyways, let's just look at the uh, comparison. Okay, I'm gonna move you over here now. Um, I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh my god, what the f <laughs> Okay, so here's a tiger I drew 10 years ago and here's one I drew this month. Um, I tried to keep it sort of a similar style because it's like pencil. This is actually pencil. I have not drawn in pencil for a super super long time. So I wanted to do something in a similar kind of look and I used color pencils to um, sketch. You see, I don't really draw stuff 
that is too different from what I do now. Like look, these are not based off of each other and I just thought about it, thought about it under very independent circumstances and it's the same thing. On one hand, I want to, you know, look back and go, oh, I can't believe I used to draw these, kind of, these kinds of things, but it has essentially remained unchanged. So I don't know how to feel about that. Anyways, here is an old, like old school vintage diver suit. And then I just sort of drew a newer, better version of it. And I did a lot of research when it came to this, these two drawings because I like it. And I did not know this, but these are actually lead weights that they use so they don't float up to the surface because they're filled with air, right? So, and I guess like modern divers use these too, but these are actually like huge, huge blocks of like lead or metal, or something heavy to pull them down. All right. Um, one thing that strikes me about this sketchbook is how sparse it is. Um, there really isn't so much in here that I could not have fit in half the amount of pages. We're going to be jumping around, so uh, I did something here, but let's just bookmark that for now and then move on. Yeah, so more like organic shapes and this sort of like stuff really influenced my design language even to this day. Like I really, really like and this sort of like curvy, flowy, organic lines, even when it comes to um, hard surface stuff like vehicles or mechs. But let's just like keep this in mind because I did a piece for this further down the sketchbook. All right, here we go. That's my favorite subject, mech armor. I did a few and this is the same one. So you can see the difference between um, the pose and the shape and the proportions like I'm really proud of how far I've come when it comes to mech armor just because it's something that I draw a lot a lot of so I'm really happy to see that there is some sort of improvement right this one is uh, so <laughs> here is my OC that I one of my first like OCs that I did and she's like a cyberpunk armor girl that sort of thing you know we all have that uh, so here's that drawing um so one thing i learned about drawing in this pose is that there is this sort of irredeemable pose and what i mean by that is that you really can't possibly fit this onto a sketchbook page where the composition looks nice Unless you're doing it in a full spread where this girl is like taking up this whole spread. There really isn't any way you could possibly fit this here and have it look somewhat nice. You could do it this way, but I don't I don't really like that. So more of that. Here's something I did for the video. It's unrelated to any of this stuff, so um, if you've seen the previous video, you, you you recognize this one. More mech girls, just because I've been I drew a lot of them. Um, some thumbnails for I don't know something. I I don't remember. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I drew a lot of mech girls in this old sketchbook. So I decided to do more of it, more of it here. I'm just giving it some more dynamic poses. Like some of these poses are actually not too bad. Like th this one is kind of dynamic. This one is, you know, it's riding a bike, but it's not just standing still, which I kind of appreciate that. Like props to props to 10, 10 year ago me for actually trying to use dynamic poses. So here's some of that where I just used, you know, the old visor and that I guess this one is this one or this one is this one or this one is this one I don't know but like just using some of the old design elements that I had here and just refreshed it gave it a new look ah so here this is it this is the branch page that I was talking about so this is done in gouache I I'm a huge fan of um, these like organic flowy like stripey look 
um, even when it comes to my mech stuff, I use this a lot and armor and even architecture. So I really, really like this sort of look and it truly has influence. Like this page has pretty much influenced a huge majority of my design sense, if you could call it that. This is just a study, I guess, of a rainbow eucalyptus, which I mean, it looks a little bit different in real life, but the colors are just different. Ah, so here is a page from the very last one. I don't know, I just was like jumping around because like when something caught my eye, then I would just redraw it. So this is the last spread of my old sketchbook. Um, it's different, I, I know the buildings are different, but it's kind of the same thing in terms of its like shape. And if any of you live in Melbourne, you would probably recognize this building. It's a Flinders Street Station. Um, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Melbourne. I really like the city. It's I've got a lot of good memories there. Um, here's another mech drawing. It's unrelated, but it was supposed to be for a video, which um, never made it, or I would say has not been made yet. And I don't know if it will ever be, but Oh, what the hell, let's just show it now. Uh, so this piece was supposed to be for the previous video about how to ink over a pencil drawing. And I just couldn't find a way to fit it into the video. But anyways, for this video, I just wanted to make it a point to basically not shit on my old art. And you know, you see a lot of videos online about artists who you know look at their old art and they cringe and they, they shit all over their old art. which. I think it's a little bit unfair because it's a very natural part of growing as an artist. You're gonna have bad drawings when you first start out. Even now, you're gonna have bad drawings. So I don't think it's really a very healthy way of looking at old art and just to, you know, crap all over it and just say, man, I was so bad back then. Because there are artists out there who still draw like this. I mean, people who are starting out are gonna draw like this. And if they see something that they have drawn look like what your old art is and if you're you know shitting all over your old art which looks like what they're drawing now i think it's kind of disheartening so i've just made it a point to you know instead of talking bad and talking down on the old art why not instead focus on how far uh, i've come or the improvements that have been made right okay so let's just jump back into the old sketchbook first and then I did a lot of like fan art of Marvel characters, not because I liked, you know, Marvel comics. I did, but that wasn't the reason why I did it. It was because I was trying to study anatomy and posing. And Marvel comics and like even like graphic novels in general have like these really, really cool poses and designs and anatomy that I used to use as reference for studying how to draw characters. So there were a lot of like really cool designs and poses and um, like it was just my main source of reference for character drawing and character design and anatomy and all that so like here sort of like x-men stuff i don't know it's old school doctor strange this is like when civil war was still in its comic form when it first came out um empty page i guess this is one of those irredeemable pages i was talking about ah okay so here is the spreads for this one. Um, it's really hard to just like redraw the spaceship design and copy it directly just because like if it's not very good, you can't really like fix it too much. So I just used this as like inspiration to just draw some spaceships in this page here. And you can see I really like spaceships so I drew a lot of them back in my day and still do, to be honest. So, you know, kind of similar, but they're just spaceships drawn in two different time periods of my life. Some more spaceships, I'll just move it here so you guys can see better. Yeah, so I was experimenting with shading with this gray ink brush that I had, but I'm not really sure if I like it just cause it's way too dark to use a shading and the contrast is so high that it's really 
hard to tell the forms apart. So that is the end of this sketchbook and both sketchbooks. I think it was really fun to just like, look back on you know, how far I've come and it's kind of encouraging just to see because you know when you're actually doing it you don't really see the improvement like improvement comes in like small little steps right and to look back and then see the difference between 10 years is actually kind of remarkable and really really fun to be honest I think it's an exercise that or just something fun that you could do if you don't, you don't know what to draw maybe just go look back at your old drawings and try to redraw them and make them better and that's it for April's monthly sketch tour. If you like it, like it, comment, subscribe, you know what to do. Have a nice day.